tell you his chain cost a quarter million dollars. I tell you that chain is five thousand now. And those stones are for Gaga. I put the seat back when we rollin'. I let the system dunk when we coastin'. Yeah. Recently, I interviewed Fat Joe at my school last year at Howard, and it was a, it was a close forum, like a intimate setting with about a hundred students. And you know, one thing that was funny was so many questions were about you, about me. you know. And is it is it the same with you when when you're in a setting? It actually there's a lot of questions about him. See, there's a lot of people already assess the situation, and they they ask themselves why is Fifty even talking to him? They're not on the same level. He's receiving so many more questions about me than I am about him because he doesn't have anything more exciting going on with him than me. Jumping on his ass for the moment. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and like if he didn't become disrespectful on Rap City, I wouldn't have even addressed it. You know, it's one of those things where you tell a kid not to touch the the kitchen stove because you might have to spank his hand, tell him not to touch it. And then he'll come back and you spank his hand again, but you're trying to prevent him from actually getting burnt. So is that bad? You understand what I'm saying? So I've, I've fired one of the shots to the point, now I'm not really fucking shit up. Like, see, hip-hop is competitive. So you got to be conscious of who you go into competition with. And it, it, it is a competition, because until it actually spills over into the street, you got to consider what they say is beef as battling. Because the art form has always had that component as a part of it. The competitive nature of it is the reason why KRS was on MC Shan's ass, and he didn't say nothing more than Queensbridge. You know what I'm saying? And, and KRS was like, no, the Bronx started, the Bronx created hip hop. That was enough to create those issues. Then they didn't interact with each other, there was no personal anything involved. You know what I mean? In Joe's case, he's expressed discomfort in the success I've been having from afar and trying to put associate themselves with anyone who doesn't actually have uh, good intentions for me. So let me ask you this, will it, will it ever end? I mean, that's, this is open to everyone. Well, his career is ended. Ended. His career's ended. So he'll be another one of those guys that they look at down the line and say, damn, 50 destroyed him like he destroyed Ja and these other guys. You see what I'm saying? Like, Ja's in a space where he still had a major record company willing to spend marketing dollars on him. Universal Music, and now he doesn't even have an album release date. You feel what I'm saying? Like after the attempt to put out my Mariah Carey just sold his single. Wasn't his record My Body? My body, my body. Yeah, and she just sold Touch My Body. Yeah. You know, and that proves it. It's a hit for her and, and shit for him because that content belongs to that kind of artist instead of what we do from a hip hop perspective. Now, with from that, Fat Joe's debuts with 45,000 copies sold after all of the momentum and energy that was going on surrounding me and him going back and forth. This is an indication that it's not the music, it's a disconnect with him and the public. He'll have a hit like, lean back. Name one record, please. If you can do this, I, I will really humble myself. I'm on camera. Name one record. There was a single following Lean Back. Oh, no, before you, you know, you strain yourself. Name one record. There was a single after I Make It Rain. And name a record that's a single after this that's going to mean something. What I'm trying to indicate to you is he's created a pattern of being able to create a song the second single. It's worth listening to. So no one's gonna actually go out and purchase an album from Fat Joe at this point. You see what I'm saying? He's delivered one song from those records and he feels like he's hot because that's enough to keep him getting a show in a nightclub for $20,000. You feel what I'm saying? A show and that's enough for him to pay for the front. I tell you his chain costs a quarter million dollars. I tell you that chain is five thousand now. And those stones are for Gaga in there. Like this fake shit in there. You see what I'm saying? Like these are these are the the things that, that go on within the actual art form 
the, the public is aware of, but not so aware of, and it's not in their face to the point. They give you benefit of the doubt because they know on some levels that there's some artists involved that can actually afford to do that. Like that's, that's real diamonds. It's 80,000. Those are real, you see what I'm saying? And it's because even without a record out, there'll be points that they're receiving 50,000 a show because they're on my stage. In mean, international run, there's points where I'm getting a million dollars a show. Seven fifty, five hundred thousand to be in a whole nother market. That's the only way you get me to have it. In certain you see what I'm saying, in certain show sets. So a lot of times the artists, you know, they want to live life on the highest level and they, that just comes from not having. So the new guy that's out there that's writing records, he's writing from a fifty cent perspective, even though he hasn't accomplished anything. And I'm writing from a fifty cent perspective. When it starts to feel oversaturated, it's because they're fronting. You know, so my content doesn't even feel original from the perspective that I'm at. So I go further back into not having. Like when I created Curtis, 187 for the Curtis album, I, um, I, I stated lyrics like coming up, I was confused, my mom's. No, that was hated a lot. No, I said, I was a snotty nose, nappy head, dirt yeah, palm nigga. Yeah. Saying, I can't wait till yeah, I get a little yeah. bigger. Had the niggas jump me, pump on my head, thinking I wish I had a gun, a full of nigga with lead. To the kitchen at the school for the power being yeah, nigga. Wishing I had a gun, so I could smoke yeah, yeah, nigga. What I'm saying about that is, I'm telling you, the time I had to jump. I'm showing you what rappers don't show. Rappers become superheroes. I'm showing you defects. I'm showing you vulnerability. I tell you, I'm getting my ass kicked to the point where I don't even have a gun yet. So I'm taking a kitchen knife with me just in case these niggas run up on me again. And I wish I had a gun so I could just shoot these niggas when they try the next time. You see what I'm saying? So this is the reality of you growing up in, under the circumstances that I grew up under and you being all alone. I'm the only child. I ain't a brother and sisters to go get. I'm gonna get a knife out of the kitchen. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you get, if you, you fighting four or five people, <laughs> it's either that or be afraid to make your route home from school. You know, so I'll take the time to, to go even further back because I still have those things to work off of, but it doesn't make sense to me. Like, that was one of the harder records on, on the Curtis record. And it doesn't make sense to write that really aggressive content, hard content. If it's not coming from some place real. I put the seat back when we rolling. I let the system dump when we coasting. I had a tray pound with me cock. Went up on me and shot. And the street like the n***a say they know me. I don't know them. They say we came up together. I don't owe them. I'm